Hi everyone, today I want to show you how to build a fast concrete powder or sand color converter. So just need to stand right here and place your concrete powder blocks against the other ones and it would automatically convert the white ones into green ones. It would work with every colors, so you could also convert them into something else. So here you could change the colors and it doesn't matter what you input in the system. So you could also convert the blue ones into orange. The color converter glitch was first shown by test with sand and there are definitely simpler systems to achieve the same but not with this high speed. So this system was optimized for high speed. It can convert an, a block stream of 18,000 blocks per hour which is basically as fast as can place blocks if you hold down right click. So before I start with the tutorial I want to explain why the system is so complicated and how it works and why I couldn't use a simpler setup uh, because of the limitations it has. So let's take a look first at a simpler setup, um, which would be this one. This basically has the same, but I can't use it as quick as this one. So basically this block gets pushed over, sits in the air for two game ticks, and I send in the other block for zero tick pulse. But as you can see here, if I have um, the other block gets basically pushed back the pink one, um, but it would take three additional game ticks until I can push the pink one again. So basically the fastest with this setup would be a five game tick cycle. But here we're running on a four game tick cycle, so I can't use this setup, which would be a lot simpler. Now let's take a look at what happens here. So we have the input stream of the blue concrete powder blocks. They would be sent in this position. Basically, um, zero tick this piston and it'll send over instantly to this position. Then this redstone dust line would be activated, which instantly sends out the orange concrete powder block, which would sit in the air for two game ticks and then it would convert into falling block entity. After two game ticks we send in the blue uh, powder block for a uh, zero tick instantly and would basically convert into the orange one and would start falling down. The orange one would be also pushed over but since you can only zero tick or send over a block uh, instantly for zero tick if it's directly in front of the piston it would take additional three game ticks until we can push the orange concrete block again. And that's why we have to send in uh, the backup orange powder block. So we could activate this again after four game ticks. After four game ticks, um, this block can't be pushed again, but after five game ticks, it will be pushed over instantly uh, into this position again. Basically, we, we rotate two um, concrete powder blocks to convert them uh, as a yeah, template for the color. So now I'm just using a command block to place the blocks for me. So you can see this in real speed and it's pretty crazy looking. Um, yeah, I forgot to mention that after two game ticks, we also send over the block um, from this posi position to there. So that's why you can activate the system every four game ticks. So one last note, the simple input into the block stream of this system right here um, has some flaws if you have lag issues on a server, for example. So here in the empty world, I would always run at 20 TPS and then it's no issue at all, you could easily use it. But if you want to use this on a server, I would recommend a yeah, lag safe system instead. So instead of having a block update system, uh, use a clock system. So here we activate this piston just every four game ticks uh, with a zero tick. So it would retract as fast as possible uh, because otherwise the piston arm could be in a way of the, yeah, where you want to place the block. And we feed this dropper with, um, with two, uh, two inputs from hoppers. So it could basically keep up exactly with the placing speed of the player. The player would attempt to place a block every four game ticks. And this system is basically perfect if you want to AFK on a server, for example. So let's go into game mode zero. And you have to aim at the bottom right corner. Otherwise the piston arm could be in a way. And if you look at my hopper, I would stay at a constant amount of items normally. So this is perfect if you want to AFK for longer sessions. All right, now let's start with the tutorial. You can find a material list in the video description. So we start with this piston right here. I'm gonna show the yeah, slightly more complicated version, which is leg safe. So we need a piston right here. And then we need uh, droppers that would feed you new concrete powder blocks. And the second one below it, so it would look a little bit better because otherwise this doesn't look that great. So we want a flat ground around the dropper. 
So then we need um, a lever here on the side. Could also use a yeah, redstone lamp. And we need some inputs into, uh, yeah, we need to power the dropper and the uh, piston with zero tick pulses. So here we need some concrete, uh, some redstone dust. And here we have the zero tick pulse generator. We need additional redstone dust and it's blocked off by this block right here. And here we have a slime block. And in the back we have a sticky piston and there's another one. And here's a redstone block attached in order to create the update order chain. Put another piston right here and we need to de uh, redirect the dust otherwise this piston would be powered um, because the yeah, red dust redirects and points into it um, with a yeah, button or tripwire hook right here. Then we need some redstone dust here on the back of those pistons. This one is just powered by quasi connectivity and here we have basically the update chain. And coming from this input we're gonna power a simple comparator clock. So here we have a comparator and one repeater. Of course, put the comparator on subtract mode and the system basically is done. So we still need an input into the dropper. An item stream um, can place as many chests as you want. I'm just gonna use two for now. So connect it. So we have two input streams of hoppers into the dropper. One hopper can transfer 9,000 items per hour and one dropper would send out 18,000 items per hour, which is exactly the speed the player can place blocks at. So now we need to place seven more blocks against this block right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Could also go out more additional blocks um, if you want to, but you need seven. So then we need some redstone, dust, uh, redstone torches right here and some sticky pistons here and there. So here we need to power this piston with quasi-connectivity and give it additional update to create a zero tick pulse. So here we need an additional updater piston and connect the redstone dust line like this. You can see you get the zero tick pulse. If you would try to power this block directly, don't get a zero tick pulse and this happens. So that's why you need the additional updating piston. So now we're going to continue on this side here. So that's where we place the concrete powder blocks and the color you want to convert into. Then we need a sticky piston right here that pushes it over. And now let's do the wiring for it. Now one higher, yeah, like this. And some redstone dust right here. Then we need another redstone dust right here and then put two blocks above like this and another redstone block here then we need normal pistons let's clear this again the surgical pulse generator updating piston tripwire hook right here to redirect the redstone dust and then we need the same system on the other side to send it back that's how you can also create a surgical pulse every four game ticks and another redstone, uh, redstone block right here. Then in the back, redstone dust again. Here we go down and we connect this to the torch. The block gets pushed in here, gets powered by the torch. Redstone dust gets powered. Here we go down and over to this side. Connected. Now let's do the same for the other pistons on this side. Like this. Of course, we will power both pistons now. That's not intended. Um, so we need some T flip flops. Let's give we cut off this um, alt for the alternating sides. So here we do the same piston again. And now we can already place the block right here and it will be grabbed by the next time. That's why how we alternate between sides all the time. So next step is adding those sticky pistons here and there. And we also need to create a surgical pulse to send over the block in this position immediately. 
So again, the torch and the extra updating piston, then some redstone dust here on the side. Of course, they shouldn't point into this piston here. That's why we need to redirect it. A button. All right, almost done. The last thing we need to do is power this and this piston after two game ticks, also with a serotic pulse. So we just put some slab on top, some slabs on top, some resin dust, and then go up and over like this. And here we put on the second symmetric pulse generator, it's basically the same as right here. So we need some blocks again, Red some blocks on the side. And yeah, just notice that this actually isn't required. Um, if we have a button right here, it would also work. Yep. Then again, we need some pistons. Update chain, there's a piston right here, then also some pistons on the other side to send the blocks back. Like this. Then the back again, some redstone dust. In order to power the serotic pulse generator, we also need some signal which is coming from here. So you need some slabs. Like this. And here we need, uh, use a nice trick. And this piston would actually get powered. And here we need a repeater. So for our yeah, two game tick delay, which we need. And yeah, despite this redirected, it would point into the block right here. So this is really a nice trick. Okay, we also need to send this back. Um, here we can just go over. Uh, definitely in a slab right here, so we don't power this with quasi connectivity. Another block right here, so it doesn't connect. Then we could have yeah, another flip flop right here. Sticky piston, block on top. Two games ticks of delay with the repeater. And then the redstone is done. Almost done, of course. This block needs to be one higher, so the signal is propagated the second time. And then I forgot a little detail um, when I changed the stuff right here. Definitely need to update the piston right here um, so it doesn't get stuck. And now we can add the color we want to convert into. So we're just gonna use sand now. I'm gonna convert into red sand. And let's turn this on. And now we would convert the first time. And it works. Okay. I would also recommend to test it out first if something went wrong. And I could place down the blocks like this. Now here you see them falling down. And now we could do with the, the stream of converted colors um, yeah, what you want. If you want to get the items back, um, yeah, I'm also going to show that. So here you can see how to collect this item stream. One hopper wouldn't be enough. We break the items with this bottom trapdoor. Then I pushed this hopper minecart against this cobble wall, um, so it would stand on both the hoppers and it would both feed into the chest. One hopper wouldn't be enough, that's why I need to mic out. Of course, you could also use the item stream for something else. I actually built up a system where I needed this uh, color converter and yeah, I'm gonna show that soon. Um, but thanks a lot for watching, have a nice day, bye bye.